Well, this is interesting. This is a really uh, outstanding example of a geological phenomena we call a drop stone. All right. So this giant gray boulder here is uh, a single piece of rock, a clast, and it is deposited within a sedimentary deposit consisting of lots of other clasts. Some of them sand-sized, some of them silt-sized, some of them clay-sized or mud-sized. And I hope it will occur to you that this boulder is extremely discrepant in its size. It's very, very large uh, relative to the surrounding sediment. That calls for a special explanation. Um, this is a dropstone which is interpreted as, as a, a class that has been uh, taken out to sea, floating, and then dropped into deep water sediments that are otherwise pretty fine-grained. And that can occur in the modern day when somebody like puts a rock in their boat and then they paddle out to sea and then they throw the, the rock overboard. Or you could have a tree that grabs some rocks in its roots and then the tree dies and gets washed out to sea in a flood maybe, and then it drops rocks. But the, that doesn't work for these age sediments. These are sediments of the Kingston Peak Formation, and they are Neoproterozoic in age. These are like 700 million years old. And so there were no trees, there were no people with boats. The only candidate available to take a giant boulder out to sea is an iceberg. So this dropstone is interpreted as evidence of glaciation during a great ancient ice age called the Snowball Earth. And, um, you know, this was originally an outcrop of limestone exposed on the land somewhere. A glacier plucked it up. Then that glacier flowed out to sea. It broke up and an iceberg containing this boulder floated out to sea, ultimately melted and dropped this boulder into otherwise very fine sediments. It squished into the earlier layers and then subsequent layers were draped on top of it. All right. So it's a, a classic example of evidence for ancient glaciation. But where did this limestone boulder come from? What formation is it part of? Um, if it's part of the noonday formation, then that uh, establishes one set of age relationships. If it's part of the Beck Springs formation or the Crystal Springs formation, that establishes a different set of age relationships. What I'm getting at here is the principle of relative dating by inclusions. The idea that to make chocolate chip cookies, you first need to go to the store and buy some chocolate chips. You can't put the chocolate chips in the cookie unless the chocolate chips already exist. So I'm interested in establishing the identity of the formations that fed into the Kingston Peak Formation. There's an outcrop just down the way here that gives us an important insight. Let's go take a look. One of the distinctive rock units that we have in the region that basically is almost unique is this. This is limestone uh, and or dolostone of the Beck Spring Formation. And it has these very distinctive uh, sedimentary structures called giant ooids. These giant ooids are um, uh, really unique markers of that particular formation. And if you look behind me here, within the Kingston Peak Formation, we actually have a clast containing those giant ooids right here in the rock. And the principle of relative dating by inclusions tells us that you can't have a piece of the Beck Spring Formation in the Kingston Peak Formation unless the Beck Spring Formation is older. So um, what this tells us is that at the time these strata were deposited, the sedimentary source area included the Beck Spring Formation. So pieces like this were eroded out by glaciers, carried along in icebergs, and then dropped into deep water sediments of the Kingston Peak Formation.